11. Mm. Amen. Now to my viewers, let me ask you a question. It was not Matthew, it's right, Mark. The poor you have with you always. That's Matthew. That's Matthew? Yes, sir. All right. And I also want the 12th chapter of the book of Matthew that comes in mind. Begin at verse 40. Yes, sir. And then let's build around that. I want to build a foundation from Old Testament all the way to New. Viewers, let me ask you a question. Do you have a pastor or do you watch a ministry on television or on social media that makes you believe the more money you give God, the larger your blessings are? Do you have a pastor or watch any ministry that make you believe that it's a sin to be poor? Come on, say, Pastor Jenny, you mean to tell me there are men that preach that? Kenneth Copeland. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth Copeland, who's one of the mega devils here in America that many of you are impressed with, who was Krefla O'Dollar's spiritual father. That's true. Mm. That's where Krefla O'Dollar come from. Mm. That's why they got the same spirit. He said, if you are poor, you're of the devil. Wow. He says, being poor is a sin. Wow. Viewers, we want to educate you today. I want to hit hard and dig up scripture. <laughs> now, let us understand this. <laughs> if being poor is of the devil... And if being poor is a sin, then that would make Jesus teaching of the devil. That's right. And that would make Jesus a sinner for teaching it. That's right. That's right. Viewers, have you ever been to some revival, some church service, where a hundred percent, not 95 percent or 98 percent, but a hundred percent of the entire message from start to to finish is centered around dollars. Now, don't misunderstand me. The preachers, through the craftiness of their father, the devil, have handpicked every scripture that talk about money and use it to their advantage and to the disadvantage of the ignorant. Now, let us understand this. There is a scripture that says money answer for all things. I want to itemize all of this as I go along now. Money answer for all things. Yes, that's written. In the book of Proverbs chapter 7. Y'all help her out now, because I hear Pastor Jennings up here. <laughs> and I hear Pastor Jennings out there. <laughs> huh? Amen. <laughs> I, 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 it's like a boomerang effect. <laughs> I know the Lord is, talks to me, but uh, not through your cell phone. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, viewers, I want to take my time and educate you. Can you be blessed? Can God give you a blessing if you have no money? Come Question on. one. Do you have to pay for a blessing? Right. Question number two. Do your blessing hang on or is it determined by the amount of money that you give the Lord? Question number three. These things that you need to consider. Ask yourself, have you ever been to a religious meeting and you had no money to give and the preacher put you on a guilt trip? Made you feel guilty. How many here can identify that? Let the church say amen. Have the preacher ever made you feel guilty because you didn't have money to give? Have the preachers only taught giving in the form of dollars and cents as if there's nothing else to give? Are right, you right. listening to the old man? Right. All right, let's get the scripture that they harp on right. first. Money answer. For all things. Now, money answer for all natural or materialistic things that got to be properly explained.
Because I can give you a Bible where money don't answer for something. That's right. One scripture says money answered for all things. Another scripture, money was offered to buy the spirit of God. That's right. In the eighth chapter of Acts. Acts. When the apostles went to Samaria right. and Simon the sorcerer, who's like your pastor, saw the Holy Ghost being given through the laying on hands of the apostles. Simon, here. Simon. And when Simon saw this in the eighth chapter of Acts, and at verse eighteen, says what? And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, how was it? The Holy Ghost was given. What did he do? He offered them money. Hold it. This show you the cheapness of Simon. Yeah. And it also show you his love for money. That's right. There was. Let me make it plain. Any preacher, all prosperity preachers. Are false prophets. That's right. Did you hear me? I didn't stutter. That's right. I'm not speaking in tongue now. You need an interpreter. No. All prosperity preachers that you see in America, all of them, I don't care what color they are, what nationality they are, every prosperity preacher in America, in Africa, in Europe, or in any other foreign country, all of them are sent by the devil. That's right. They are liars, they are charlatans, they are religious thieves, they are religious pips, they are scam artists. There's somebody on social media hiding under the name of Pastor Gino Jennings. Under each of our programs where people make comments, they even use a picture of me begging for money, trying to scam people. For their money. Viewers, religion is one of the biggest scams yes, in the world. That's right. That's true. How did it become like this? Because leaders have misrepresented God and did a trade off. Trade God in for money. And they love for money. Whom the Bible says the root of all evil. all evil. They love for the money. They love for wealth. They love for notoriety. They love for riches. Have taken them over so great. Until they don't fear God at all. At all. When a man can stand before his people. Or any group of people. And boldly tell them. God spoke to me and told me to tell you buy me a Rolls Royce and you believe it when a man can stand up and tell you God said it's time for me to have a new jet and you buy it and you believe it if a man want a jet let him work and buy it himself if a man want a jet or want a car, want a mansion, fine, nothing wrong with that. But don't do it off the back of the poor. That's right. That's true. Get a job, go to work, buy the house of your choice, the car of your choice, the plane of your choice. But when you have all that and still don't have God, you will go to hell, which certainly is not your choice. That's right. Listen at this. Acts chapter 8 and verse 18. All right, follow me and get me. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the when Holy the Ghost sorcerer was given, saw that through the laying on hands of the apostles, the Holy Ghost was given, the Spirit of God was given, he offered them money. He, you hear? You hear how wicked? He offered them money. Saying, Give me also this power. That's the way it is in the churches. They tell you, if you want to experience a great move of God, and the preacher will close his eyes tight when you look at him on television and go off on that fake tongue. Remember Robert Tilton? That's yeah. right. Yeah. There was these men make millions of dollars. Robert Tilton didn't hardly break a sweat. He had sit behind the desk with a prop in the back of him and beg for money every day on countless of television stations. That's right. Beg for money. When I came up, one of the biggest beggars was so-called Reverend Ike. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember him? Oh, yeah. Pulled pit pimp. 
And the reason why people pack these churches out, because the public want to be rich, right. but the public don't want to be holy. That's right. The love for money That's right. and the love for God don't mix. No. No man can serve two masters. That's right. You're going to love one and hate the other. Hate the other. God wants total commitment. That's right. God wants total obligation. God wants total and complete satisfaction. That's right. Only God desire and deserve to be worshipped. That's right. They have fell in love with prosperity so much until they wish up the dollar. Yeah. The dollar now has become the face of religion. Not Jesus. That's right. Not Jesus the Christ. That's right. Not the spirit of the living God. The dollar. The dollar. Have become the face of religion. That's right. Listen at this. Still in Acts chapter 8 and at verse 18. All right. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, uh -huh. he offered them money. He offered them money. Saying, give me also this power. He offered, he wanted to buy the power of God. That's right. And viewers, that's the way the preachers are now. They make you believe that they get this great anointing. They'll do anything to make you believe they are powerful. Right. Amen. That they are great. Uh, So-called prophet called me last week. And he said, well, Pastor Jennings, I, I have worked signs and wonders, and God have did miracles through me. I told him, I don't care. I don't care about that. He said, you don't care? I said, no. no. He said, but signs and wonders is of God. I said, signs and wonders is of God and the devil. That's true. In the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Don't you know the devil works signs and wonders in the Old Testament and the New? And the New. Listen here. Not even Jesus is impressed with signs and wonders. No. Because even if God used you of a truth to raise the dead, to open the eyes of the blind, to restore hearing, to let the lame walk. Yeah. After Jesus used you to do it, Jesus can still send you to hell. That's right. In other words, here, 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 viewers. That's right. Men that work miracles, miracles don't save you. That's right. That's right. Oh, I know that that, that, that upsets somebody. That's upsets people. Oh, see, but Pastor Jim is God used him. All right, I can accept that. But miracles. Miracles. Don't save you. In the book of St. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 5. I want to prove this with prove the it. Bible. That after a miracle is done. And after the one wrote the miracle. God can still send them to hell. That's right. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. You prosperity miracle workers. <laughs> you see they want to see a miracle. Yeah. And man, the man want his eyes back so he can see the woman hips. <laughs> he want his feet to be here so he can go back and party. That's right. That was the song in the 70s. Party. That's true. And, and that's what they want. That's right. Most folk want healing because they are convicted at that time. That's right. But when they start feeling a little better, he or she go right back to the same madness that they were in. Listen at this, viewers. I said, even if God used any of these things out here to work any miracle, I don't care. I'm not impressed. That's right. You still can go to hell. That's right. And let's get Bible for this. Matthew chapter 7 and at verse 21. Listen. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But what? But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in God him. wants you to obey him. That's it. Blind man, you receive your sight back. Wonderful. Wonderful. Woman, you got your hip back in place. Wonderful. Amen. Hey, fellow, you're back from the dead. You are wonderful. That's right. Hey, Amen. Broken arm is back in place. Wonderful. That's right. I don't care nothing about that. That's right. God says, not everyone that says unto to me, Lord, God. Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Not everyone that says 
that call upon the Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's going to be saved. But he that doeth the will of my Father, you got to do God's will. Many will say to me in that day. Many, here it is. Here many. it is, right here. Many will here say it to is, me. here. You out there bragging about you work miracles. I don't care if you cause people fingernails to grow. That's right. What would I care? That's right. That don't impress God. No. After your fingernail grow long enough to get a manicure, you I go to hell just the same. That's right. Eh? Many will say to me in that day. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, 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 Lord. have we not prophesied in thy name? Ah, uh, that's what the fellow was saying to me. I, I, I can show you a list of all type of prophetic happenings. And it came to pass. Listen, I don't care if you prophesied that the moon will be cheese. And you took a flight up there and cut a slice and put it on your wheat bread with some bologna and salami. That's right. I don't care. That's right. If you don't obey God, you and your cheese is going to hell. That's right. Miracles don't save nobody. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Oh, we take God. Get this. Many will say to me in that day. Many will say to me in that day. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy then name? Then we prophesied in your name. And in thy name have cast out devils. We cast out devils. And in thy name. And in thy name. Done we've done a whole lot of wonderful work. Wonderful work. work. Yes. And then will I profess unto then them. Then God going to talk. I never knew you. What? Then will I profess unto them I never knew Raise you. Raise the dead. Make the dumb talk. Make the blind see. Let the ears come open. Let the lame walk, let the lame shout, let them run around the church in the Indiana 500 slap your hands on the head let them fall on the floor, let them get back up let them go to the cemetery and tell all the dead and let all the people in the cemetery come back That's and right. stand on their feet but when it's, when it's all over then the will, scripture says, then will I profess unto them I after never you've knew done you. doing all that, amen I never knew you. After you pulled all that off. I never knew you. God said. Then will I profess unto them I never knew you. What? How do I feel about them? Depart from Get me. Get away from me. Ye that work iniquity. Wait a minute. Amen. They raise the dead. They open the eyes of the blind. The lame man walk. The broken arm is healed. And what did God call all that? Ye that work iniquity. He said your works is the works of a sinner. That's right. That's right. What do you mean? Not even God. Right. will credit someone who he used to heal right if they don't obey his word that's right you get no credit no credit for none of the works that's right that's right this is what the scripture means obedience yes. hallelujah hallelujah to god obedience better than sacrifice is better than, better, better than sacrifice. Than sacrifice. That's right. Than the offering of the fat of rams. Of the fat of fat rams. rams. Your miracle works ain't worth a dime. Right. Even if you prophesy and it come to pass. That's right. It ain't worth a dime. That's right. If you don't obey God. That's right. Don't say, wait a minute, Pastor Jennings. For a miracle to work, that person got to be obeying God. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Someone said, prove it, Pastor Jennings. In the days of Moses, they threw down the rod of Aaron. Oh, yeah. Aaron rod turned to a serpent. That's right. And Pharaoh's magicians who were idolatrous. That's right. Threw down their rod. And Moses and Aaron went under Pharaoh. Here, here, here. I want to debunk you that got in mind that if a miracle is done, then that person has to be obeying God. No, that's a lie. That's a lie. Because you know there's a scripture that talk about signs right. and lying, lying wonders. wonders. Lying wonders. Huh? That's right. Scripture talk about signs that's right. and wonders that tell a lie. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan. Wait a minute. Hmm. In the book of 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 9. Wait a minute. Amen. Even him who's coming, whom God used. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan. No, God used him. Is after the working of Satan. That means God sent him. Oh, the God of this world. That's right. The devil. That's right. Sent this man. Even him who's coming is Even after the him. working so of here, Satan. So here, here, you out there working miracles. Did God send you mm. or the devil? Amen. Your signs and wonders. Someone said, well, how can it be a lying wonder 
if you see it happening, happening. what make it a lying wonder because it is done by the power of the father of lies. That's right. It's still a wonder but it come under the heading lying wonder because it is done by the spirit of falsehood. That's right. That's right. Go with to God. They don't know. You jump again. Oh man, my, my pastor is a miracle worker. By what spirit? By what spirit? That's right. Viewers, you never thought of this. That's right. And you're getting carried away over so-called miracle workers. Oh no. Oh, there are two working miracles. That's right. God and the devil. And the devil. Read that. Give chapter and verse, and then we go to the Old Testament yes. and get what happened in the days of Moses. Is everybody all right? All right. I want to educate. Just what the Holy Ghost brought today. Amen. Listen, listen at this now. The book of Second Thessalonians, chapter two and verse you nine. You know, God brought this to me yesterday. I mean, I was on a job site and the Holy Ghost brought this to me yesterday and I was walking around on the job site with things in my hand preaching it. Mm. I mean, I, I, I was just preaching it. Amen. And I'm on the job site now. That's preaching right. it. That's right. What did he say, son? Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 9. Get this, viewers. We want to take you to school today. Amen. What? Give chapter and verse again. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and the ninth verse. All right. Even him whose coming is after the working. Of Even Satan. him. Whose coming is after the working of the devil. With all power. All power. He's a powerful satanic worker. That's right. All right. And signs. He do signs. And lying. Man, the signs that he do, he do miracles. That's right. And what? And lying wonders. And lying wonders. Lying wonders. What else? And with all deceivableness. With all deceivableness. Of righteousness in them that Wait perish. a minute. They are, they are he's functioning under deception that's right these signs and wonders be done and the people are being deceived yes. by the signs and wonder until the Holy Ghost said and with all deceivable with all tricks of unrighteousness with and all trickery with all deceivableness with all undermining that's right with all bamboozling yeah. that's right oh, yeah. that's right with all, all deceivableness, deception of unrighteousness in them that perish, of doing that which is wrong of they, them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. They're not doing it in truth. That's right. They're not doing it by the spirit of truth. That's right. They are doing it by the power of the spirit of error. That, uh, that's right. What? Because they receive not the love of the truth. They receive not the love of the truth. That they might be saved. So they can be saved. And for this cause, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. Wait a minute. They don't want to hear God. That's right. They so carried away with their miracle working. That's right. So God sent them a strong delusion and make them believe that what's being done is being done by the power of God. That they but yet it's being right. done by the power of the devil. That's right. But God will give them a strong delusion. That's right. For what reason is this delusion given? That they should believe a lie. That they all might be dead. So when they say, oh, God called and sent me to preach, but yet they don't believe all the book, what are they believing? That they should believe a lie. But yet they work miracles and don't believe that there's one God, what are they believing? That they should believe a lie. And yet they work signs and wonders. That's right. But what are they believing? That they should believe a lie. That what? That they all might be damned. So they can go to hell. Who believe not the truth. But what? But had pleasure in unrighteousness. All right, now let's get the Old Testament that I may straighten you out that think that if someone works miracles, Wonderful. it's only done uh, through and by the power of God. No, sir. No, sir. Uh -uh. Oh, no. Uh -uh. I want to straighten you out here. This That's is right. good. Listen at this. In the book of Exodus chapter 7, we'll start at verse 8. Exodus chapter 7, begin at verse 8. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron. What is it? Saying, when Pharaoh shall speak unto you. When Pharaoh shall talk to you saying show a miracle for you show a miracle for you then shalt thou say unto Aaron take thy rod yeah. and cast it before Pharaoh and it shall become a serpent alright and Moses and Aaron went unto Pharaoh and they did so alright here's clearly now right. the Lord on one side right and the Lord's messenger with him right that's one side that's right and the Lord made it clear gave them instructions what to do that's right 
All right. Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and, and it shall become a serpent. And what? And Moses and Aaron went unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. As God commanded. And, and Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh. Yes. And before his servants, and it became a serpent. Yes. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. <laughs> and you had the devil and his men on the other side. That's right. Let us remember Pharaoh and those that was in Egypt were polytheists. That's right. Polytheistic. Polytheist. They was idolatrous. Oh, yeah. They wasn't worshippers of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at all. At all. But what? Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. And what happened? Now the magicians of Egypt. Wait a minute. Amen. The godly men of Egypt. Now the magicians of Egypt. The magicians, the soothsayers. Of Egypt. Of Egypt. They also did in like manner. They did in like manner. With their enchantment. With their sorcery. For they, their enchantment. Their magic. For they, uh -huh. for they cast down every man his rod. Wait a minute. Every man. So here you had a bunch of fellas under the influence of the devil. All of them threw down their R-O-D-S. For they cast down. Aaron just had a rod. Right. One. That's right. Why? Represent one God. That's right. One rod, one God. That's right. One power. Glory to God. That's right. One authority. Authority. Mm -hmm. For they cast down every man his rod. They cast down every man. Then that's on uh, the side of Pharaoh, their rod. And they became serpents. And they. They became serpents. All their rods became serpents. But Aaron's rod uh oh Amen. Aaron's one. Aaron's rod. Did what? Swallowed up their rod. That lets you know that God consumes and defeats the devil all the time. That's right. Now the book of Exodus chapter 7 still. Says what? And at verse 20. All right. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded. Yes. And he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river. Yes. In the sight of Pharaoh. And in the sight of his servants. Come on, sir. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. Turned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank. Then what? And the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Yes. And the magicians of Egypt. <laughs> the devil worked in his too. That's right. Come on, son. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantment. Do you hear this? Amen. Yeah. So to think miracles and signs and wonders are wrought by God only, only. And you got this ideology it only that a person cannot do it unless God is in them. You're wrong. That's wrong. That's right. So again, I say, That's right. don't be moved. Yeah. Don't be impressed. For such are false yeah. apostles. Don't be impressed. Right. Because you see these so-called prophets That's right. working miracles. That don't mean nothing. No. That's true. If you don't obey the heavenly father, you're going to hell. The hell. And God will tell you after all this is done, I get away from me. I don't know you. I never knew I you. I don't know you. Depart, Depart from here. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I send you to hell just the same. That's right. All right, you better give me Matthew. Matthew chapter 26 and at verse 11. All right, viewers, I want this to be good for you that's giving your money to the charlatans yeah. who got you believing that your blessing hang on your amount of money. Yeah. Now, let's understand, yes, it takes money to pay bills. It takes money to pay your water bill, light bill, gas bill, car note, clothing, food, and all that. I understand that. But when these men, we ain't even talking about that. Let's just set that aside. Right. We're talking about these men that get over media, all forms of media. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they message from the beginning to the end. It's a blessing plan. Preachers on late at night like they're doing an infomercial. That's right. You can wake up three in the morning. See them on BET. That's true. That's right. See them on TBN. That's true. See him on Star Television. See him on the local channel in your area. Telling you that God sent them. They got a prophetic message from God to teach you how to get rich. You want to know how to get rich? Go to college. Go to college. Take some courses. That's right. Get a seminar. Someone who is an honest investor. That's right. 
to show you how to invest and turn your money over. The purpose of the church is to save you from the judgment, the wrath of God. That's, right. That's coming upon the world. That's right. Here viewers, here viewers, here viewers. God, and I want every prosperity preacher listening that debunk this face Pastor Jennings. Because I'm challenging all of you. God have never sent no preacher in the history of the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. The sin went out. And just preach to people how to get money. To get money. Right. How to get rich. That's right. How to get wealthy. That's right. The purpose of the church is to prepare you to meet God like God said Noah. Right. To prepare the world to escape the flood. That's right. Every prophet, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Amen, and Balaam, and right. Moses, and all the prophets. They were sent of God to warn the people. That's yeah. it. Jesus came here. That's right. He ain't come preaching you get rich. Oh, no. He come preaching you get right until the Bible went so far of saying about Jesus, he was rich. But for our sake, he became poor. Now hold it. Hold it now. I gotta explain that scripture. That's right. For ye know. Listen, 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 listen. Because this is the mistake that you make, viewer. Right. You think rich, riches, is only in materialism. That's right. After you read that, give me the book of Jude. Yeah. Chapter 1. I only got one chapter, so you ain't got to struggle to look for it. Right. Listen. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. Follow me. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich. Though he was rich. That for your sakes he became poor. Hold it! Yes! I got to explain that Amen. for some liar come along and say, you see there, Jesus was a rich man. Yes, he was. And no, he wasn't. That's right. Well, how was it he was rich? He was God and everything is his. That's right. Was that God, he said, all things the father have are mine. All things the father have are, he said, are mine. That's right. Moon and the stars belong to him. That's right. The sea belonged to him. That's right. The fish in the sea belonged to him. That's right. All the members until he said, all souls are mine. That's right. He ain't talking about money and all that. No. No. His riches was his word. That's right. But the Bible said we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. The power of God is the wealth of God. That's right. And the Bible said Jesus of Nazareth was filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the riches of God, the spirit of God, the power of God. That's right. So the Bible says what? For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what? That though he was rich. Though he was rich. That for your sakes he became poor. Hold it. When it says for your sake he became poor, that means for your sake he became lowly. That's right. The nature that he had, which was spirit, was a rich nature. Because it was a nature that extends beyond this universe. And it's an eternal nature. That's right. Rich mean he's a valuable God. That's right. For our sake, he became poor. For our sake, he was manifested in the flesh. That's right. And the flesh had the appearance of a poverty-stricken man. Yeah. I want to take it apart here. Yeah. Eh? Why? Here you see rich and poor of him. Look at his rich title, king. Look at his poor parents coming out of a manger. That's right. Huh? Eh? That's right. You don't find a king coming out of a manger. Yeah. A king come from a palace. That's right. But this king came from eternity. Yeah. And formed a body in the ghetto. That's right. Oh, yeah, That's right. Glory to God. That's right. That's why the scripture says, can anything clean come, come out of Nazareth? Out of Nazareth. Here you had a king, which is God, made a sacrifice, yeah. made a body, yeah. and God was manifested in the flesh. Yeah. Riches 
was manifested yeah. in poverty. That's right. So the book talked about Jesus' appearance yeah. and said his vice. As many were astonished at thee. Listen. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 52 and verse 14. As many were amazed at thee. His vices were so his marred. His vice, his appearance was so marred. More than any man. His appearance he looked more poor than any man. Than anybody. And his form more than the sons of men. His what? And his form. His form. More than the sons of men. 